Before we get into this episode of WTH, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want extended BTS content or fashion conversation, join us on Patreon. You'll gain access to our brand building Patreon only series class, as well as access to our private Discord filled with individuals looking to build meaningful fashion brands, personal brands, or just talk fashion. They're all welcome. Thanks again. Now back to the episode. Comme des Garcons, better known as CDG incorrectly for reasons I'll explain later, is one of the great independent fashion labels on the planet. But it's also one of the most extensive with so many branches, sub labels, and designers that it's often hard to really understand where it begins and ends. That's why today on WTH, we break down pretty much all the layers of Comme des Garcons. The labels, what they focus on, the designers currently and not currently working for the company, and those who come from the house of Comme. I'm your boy, Reggie Casual, and this is... We start with Rei Kabakubo herself. The story of the designer is extensive and has been told more than a thousand times. So we're only gonna give you the Cliff Notes version here. Graduate of the prestigious Keio University where she studied fine arts and literature, kabukubo san would start her career working for textile manufacturer Asahi Kase before becoming a freelance stylist. However, she became increasingly frustrated when she couldn't find the things she wanted to style with. So she decided to do the logical thing and solve the problem by making what she needed. As Kabakubo put it, I always wanted to use fashion as a tool as a material to make a business out of creation. Even further, she states, the first thing that I remember growing up is that I wanted to be independent, make a business and work. They were very important things for me, to be independent, free, and work. A sentiment she no doubt received from her father, who Kawakubo claims was a champion of women's rights in post-war Japan, no less. This eventually led Kawakubo to start her own venture. And in 1969, Comme des Garçons Limited was established in Tokyo. By 1975, the first boutique opened, and by 1981, it had graced the Parisian runway. At that point, Comme des Garçons was, for lack of a better term, traditional than what Comme des Garçons is known for today. A fact that was not lost on Kawakubo, who stated, in fashion, we have to get away from the influence of what had been done in the 1920s or the 1930s. I decided to start from zero, from nothing, to do things that have not been done before, things with a strong image. And those powerful images came at a cost. While initially maligned in Europe, Comme des Garçons saw success in Japan. And along with fellow contemporary Yoji Yamamoto, who she was at one point romantically involved with, would spark a movement aptly named Karasuzoku, literally translated as the crows, a style defined by its black laden and often deconstructed garments, which coincidentally became a style of design and technique that would inspire Japanese designers till today. This has made Comme des Garçons and Kabukubo herself inextricably tied to the trajectory of fashion in Japan. It's incredible to be sure, but once the layers are unpacked, the true extent of Comme des Garçons' reach is undeniably vast. To begin the main line, Comme des Garçons is decidedly anti-fashion less concerned with placating the masses and more concerned with the abstract creative process. Collections are often misunderstood when showcased, only to be considered strokes of genius sometimes years later. A well-known example of this is the Hiroshima chic moniker the Western world would adopt to describe Kabakubo and subsequently Yoji Yamamoto's work, which incorrectly assigned political meaning to Kabakubo's collections when there was none. The term is now widely viewed as an insult when referring to her work. Another example includes the 1997 Spring Summer Collection that scoffed at the fashion industry's obsession with the perfect female form, ridiculed initially only to be applauded years later. And such is always the case with the main line. It isn't the most approachable or understandable, but it's directly tied to the powerful imagery Kabokubo spoke of in 1982. In 1978, Comme des Garçons Homme was launched. A bit more conservative than the mainline, but true to its ethos, good design, good quality. 
As a result, Ohm is the center of CDG's menswear universe, which includes several labels, some defunct and others still going strong. Due to being run by Kawakubo's most prominent protege, Junya Watanabe, the line bears a strong resemblance to his eponymous label, which we'll get into later. In 1981, the diffusion label Trico, Comme des Garçons, was launched. Exclusively women's wear, the label is where many of Kawakubo's protégés earned their stripes, including the aforementioned Watanabe, and lesser known but still gifted, Tao Kurihara. While Trico was based in knitwear initially due to its name, Trico has since included a more expansive offering and is noticeably more playful than the main line. In 1984 sprang Comme des Garçons Homme Plus, the abstract wing of Homme. Often viewed as the menswear answer to the main line, Ohm Plus reworks, deconstructs, and reassembles menswear. Note, in 1995, Kawakubo stated, the basics of clothing lie in men's fashion, end quote. Thus, the desire to reimagine menswear becomes a challenge worth exploring. Ohm Plus approaches menswear by using non-traditional fabrics, asymmetrical proportions, and cutout techniques to buttress its core tenet of broken tailoring. While not the most profitable of the comb lines, it's certainly one of the most important for maintaining Ray's vision, and its archive has become increasingly popular for men exploring comb's true ethos and ideas. In 1987, yet another menswear line was released in the form of Comme des Garçons, Homme Deux. Homme Deux, in fact, challenges menswear in the business arena offering easy to wear pieces for the Japanese business elite, effectively targeting a market that was and still is rife with conformity. In 1988, Comme des Garçons shirt was released, a strong departure from the darker palettes of other Comme des Garçons lines. Shirt offered a colorful take on a singular garment, the shirt. Positioned as a unisex line, shirt proposes to liven mundane wardrobes, but also illustrates how Kabukubo can birth an entire brand with a singular garment. The line has since been known to collaborate with several artists, brands, and tastemakers, including one with Futura and even Asics. CDG shirt has since become so popular that it's come to include more expanded collections beyond the moniker of which it is named. In 1992, Kabakubo encouraged her most noteworthy and most loyal protege, Ingenio Watanabe, to launch his own label under the Comme des Garçons banner. That label would turn into Ingenio Watanabe Comme des Garçons, which itself has several diffusion labels, including Ingenio Watanabe Man, the now defunct Ingenio Watanabe Man Pink, and the now folded into everything I, Ingenio Watanabe Man. But rather than gloss over the enormous impact of Ingenio Watanabe, the designer, We'll leave his story for another time. However, it is important to mention that Junya Watanabe Man remains amongst the most popular and ultimately most worn fashion lines within the Comme des Garçons universe. In 1993, Comme des Garçons, Comme des Garçons debut. That's two combs in one. Presented as a more ready to wear version of the Comme des Garçons mainline as such. Essentially, the women's wear equivalent to Comme des Garçons home. By 2002, Comme des Garçons would launch its most accessible brand to date in the form of Play Comme des Garçons. Serving as an entry point into the world of Comme des Garçons, Play is a collection created by not designing, it was the antithesis of design, based on prototypical forms. That is, according to Comme des Garçons CEO and husband of Kabakubo, Adrian Job. Indeed it is, as play is filled with simple, basic pieces that have not been designed, but simply presented. But more so, the brand became popular due to its simple logo done by Polish artist Filip Pagowski, who's a New Yorker, that eventually donned the shoulders and feet of celebs, street-inspired fashionistas, and more. The heart-shaped design became so ubiquitous that many mistook it as being the official logo for Comme des Garçons, which it isn't, but it does show how valuable it is as a label, as for over 15 years, Play has become one of the most recognizable brands in the Comme des Garçons catalog, let alone in the world, particularly in street fashion. By 2004, the expanded universe of Comme des Garçons became so large that it was only natural to build a location that would house every single label, a place where not only Comme brands would live, but a place where others in the same design space as Comme des Garçons could showcase. That place will become known as Dover Street Market, a retail location that will become a must-go-to location if you were at all a fan of the universe of Rie Kabakubo and Comme des Garçons. 
Now located in several prominent fashion heavy cities and housing hundreds of brands, Dover Street Market is markedly one of the most daring and experiential retailers in the fashion world. By 2007, Kawakubo protege Fumito Ganryu launched his eponymous Ganryu line under the Comme des Garçons banner. Fumito, a former pattern maker at Comme des Garçons, was among the first designers to hit the bell hard in terms of street fashion at Comme des Garçons. By using a borderline absurdist take on casual menswear, Fumito's knack for making it wearable caught the eye of Kabakubo. After a few successful collections, Fumito would leave the Comme des Garçons umbrella only to reemerge independently under the full namesake Fumito Ganryu, still doing what he does best. In 2009, in the midst of a global recession, Comme launched Comme des Garçons Black, the most affordable line within the Comme des Garçons universe. While initially a response to the economic downturn, as the economy has improved, however, Black has served as a more adequate entry point into the Comme des Garçons mainline, along with Om Plus. CDG Black has also maintained a long relationship with Nike, serving up minimal black sneakers and special releases with lesser used silhouettes from the Nike catalog. In 2011, Comme des Garçons would enter into a partnership with retailer Kimme Nagaoka to develop the Good Design Shop. Playing off the now infamous acronym CDG logo, the Good Design Shop not only showcased clothing, but a bevy of goods like totes, scarves, and coffee mugs. Presented as a small good shop, the Good Design Shop held some of the most popular products by the brand. However, the partnership between Kim Minagaoka and Comme des Garçons came to an end in 2018, only to turn into something else that was basically the same thing, but more on that a bit later. In 2012, relatively new Comme des Garçons Wonderkan K Minomiya launched his label Noir. K is considered a prodigy designer, primarily focusing on colorless collections for women, but his monochrome stylings are far more intense than his direction and style implies. Known for often taking days and several people to complete a garment, Minomiya's skill and patience speaks for itself and has managed to impress critics the world over. In 2015, Comme des Garçons shirt Boys was launched as an entry-level take on Comme des Garçons shirt. Even more playful than shirt, Boys isn't necessarily what its name might imply. It isn't a shirt line for children. It's simply less pricey and heavily reliant on type and print than its big brother. While notable, Boys may have came off as a bit too much considering Comme des Garçons already had brands under its wing that filled this gap. As a result, the brand was discontinued in 2019. And finally, in 2018, the brand that was birthed from the good design shop, CDG, or CDG, 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 just the acronym. Capitalizing on this generation's proclivity towards street and logo graphics, CDG serves as a more casual step into the world of Comme des Garçons, or at least a more street step, more so than even play. Pieces are picked right from the Good Design Shop catalog, while also presenting a few experimental yet approachable wares. CDG aims to be the start of a new era for Comme des Garçons, as it presents a more mature yet approachable take on populist Comme des Garçons labels. And that's the universe of Comme des Garçons, Sans Comme des Garçons Parfum, the discontinued Comme des Garçons Tau, Comme des Garçons Originals, 1980s Comme des Garçons Wallet, 2005's Homme Plus Evergreen, which serves as an archival line, and I probably would get walloped if I didn't mention Robe de Chambre for good measure. But even more brands are woven into the universe of René Cabacubo and Comme des Garçons. Notable designers that come from the family, like the aforementioned Junior Watanabe, Tao Kurihara, Keiichi Tanaka, Fumito Ganryu, Junichi Abe of Color, and his wife Titose Abe of Sakai, and even Gosha Rupchinsky, all are or were under the Comme des Garçons label or under Kabakubo at one point. And even though he never worked for Comme des Garçons directly, Jun Takahashi was encouraged by De Kabakubo to design and start his own collections, leading to Undercover. The point is, the connections run deep with Rei Kabakubo and her label, Comme des Garçons, essentially mapping an entire generation of design out of Japan and inspiring the world beyond. No matter how you slice that bread, Comme des Garçons is among the pantheon of great fashion houses, all the while maintaining an independence that's notable, laudable, commendable, and should be celebrated as it has frequently been. And that is that. Long, I know, but it was necessary. However, we need your thoughts on Comme des Garçons in the comments. 
Too many sub labels, just enough, or you just love everything CDG? Let us know what you think. And if you're feeling creative, suggest another WTH we should cover. And if you want more insight into the world of business, and fashion or personal branding, join us on Patreon to get access to our special series class where we help aspiring fashion or lifestyle entrepreneurs build and scale their businesses. And you also get access to our private Discord. That's fun. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute.